Miller here. I've got a tutorial to get you up and running in Substance Painter uh, very quickly. Um, if you head over to the Algorithmic site, they do have some very, very good video tutorials. I find they're just a little bit not quite fast enough for my liking, so I put together this quick workflow explanation. Um, I'm assuming you're starting with a model in Maya, so here's a model I've got. Um, it's UV unwrapped. I'm not using stacking or anything inside the UV map, so I'll have an easy time baking. Um, and it has one single material, so it's using this uh, small Munsta material. Uh, make sure that the material name matches the mesh name for this export. That way we'll get the materials automatically attaching in Substance Painter later, which uh, you, you'll see that in a couple minutes. So I'm going to select my uh, creature, go to File, Export, Selection, and just do a regular FBX export of this model. Before going into Substance Painter, I want to go through Substance Designer to paint a couple uh, maps that I need for Painter to use in order to do things like edge wear and dirt and uh, to get the full potential out of Painter. So I'm going to open Substance Designer and just quickly create a new substance. None of these settings matter. I don't care what resolution or name this is because I'm not even going to save this project. I want to take my FBX, drag and drop it onto Unsaved Package. Okay, so we can see a Resources folder appears, and inside I've got my model. I'm going to right-click that model, Bake Model Information. I've already got a bunch of bakers in this list here. You can ignore Scene View. Um, I've got Ambient Occlusion, Curvature, Position. I don't actually need World Space Direction and World Space Normals. If this is empty for you and you need to add some here, there's this plus sign up here. We can just select whichever ones we need. Uh, make sure these are outputting at a size that you're you're happy with. So I'm, I'm going 2K, which I usually work at, and it's pointed to a folder that I know the location of, as opposed to some random folder that I'll never find. So that's all we need to do here. That's a, a very, very simple, straightforward step. Just click OK. This is a GPU accelerated bake, so it'll be very, very fast. It actually is already done, I just didn't see a progress bar for it. So I'm going to open up Painter now. I can close this. I'm not going to need this anymore. When I open up Painter, I want to create a new project. So File New. I want to give it my FBX. And I can also add in all of these exported maps that I have. So those are the ones we just created in Substance Designer. This is the part where I, I mentioned you need to have your material name matching your file name. So if my material name was um, skin, I would want skin underscore ambient occlusion, skin underscore curvature, etc. Uh, and what that does is that allows this to automatically connect in the document settings here. If I scroll down, you can see these have automatically connected for me. Um, it's okay if they didn't automatically connect, so if I actually clear these, I'll show you just clicking on this button lets us browse for and assign these from any texture that's currently in our project. Okay, so here's our model. Uh, moving around inside this viewport is pretty straightforward. If you use Maya or Unity, you'll be right at home with how this works. Just hold down Alt, left click, middle click, right click to, to tumble around. We can hold down Shift to lock the views, kind of ZBrush style, which uh, is a bit of a time saver. And if this background is bothering you, um, you can change it. So I can change the environment map to something else if I want a different view. I can hold down Shift and left click to, uh, to change my image based lighting around. Or I can just completely get rid of the environment by changing my environment opacity to zero. Okay, so workflow wise here, we have two main kinds of layers in Substance Painter. We have fill layers and we have regular layers. Uh, regular layers are what you're you're kind of used to working with in Photoshop. So I can grab just a default brush on a regular layer and just paint directly onto the model. That's pretty straightforward. Fill layers are a little bit different. So when I create a fill layer, um, this layer itself is a material. So I can change the base color. Um, I can change what the roughness is, what the metallicness is. Um, all of this changes for the entire layer at once. Um, you'll also notice I can't paint on it. My my paint tool changes to a do not paint sign. What we tend to do with these, if we want them to only affect a certain part of our model, 
is we right click on the layer and we can add a mask. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually paint or mask out areas using the mask. So if I had a black mask, you'll see my entire layer disappears um, because you know layer masks in Photoshop uh, that work exactly the same as this and a black layer mask would be a completely transparent image. If I paint, so I can scroll down here and change the color white, you can see I reveal that material on top. Um, painting is a pretty slow way to mask this material back in. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna show you the geometry decal tool. So with this tool, um, what I'm allowed to do is I can create selections based on UV shells, objects, polygons, or triangles. So if I change my color to white, so I'm painting white on the layer mask, I can click uh, revealing my terrible UV unwrap job and expose UV shells every time I click on them. I could also do it per object, so I'll just click the entire object and mask that entire object in. So I'll name that layer. Um, this red is kind of terrible. Maybe I pick kind of a, a green, or I can pick from the lots and lots of materials that they, they give you by default here. Okay, I'm gonna add one more fill color for the background. Um, I don't really need to make an incredibly beautiful piece of artwork for you today. I just want to show you the program. So I'm just going to leave it at these layers right now and get rid of these bottom two. So I've got uh, teeth and other things layer and a skin layer to show you how masking works. Um, a couple things that I end up doing for, for most projects is I'll add a dirt layer and an edge wear layer. That kind of gives you that real uh, dirty worn look. So I'm going to create a new fill layer for dirt. And I'm going to give it just kind of a dirt style texture. So I'll get kind of like a, a desaturated brown. I'll put the height up a little bit, put the roughness up because dirt's not terribly shiny, um, and leave the metallic at nothing. I'm going to add a black mask to this layer as well so it disappears. And I'm going to add a substance effect onto the mask of this layer. So you can see I've got the mask selected versus the layer itself. Um, with the mask selected, I'm going to add a substance effect, click on effect, um, and all of these grayscale icons, uh, thumbnails that I can see here, are ones that are well suited to working with a layer mask. So I'm going to pick my favorite um, MG Dirt. I can change my layer mode to multiply, and again this feels very Photoshoppy once you kind of get used to using it. And we can see this Dirt has use the curvature map and the world space position map to kind of figure out where dirt would accumulate in this character. Um, and the result is we're getting a pretty realistic dirt distribution here with very, very, very little effort. Um, it's kind of gathering around these little cracks. And I can play with this. So I, can, I can change how much contrast I have in the dirt, how much dirt I have. Um, and again, this is all being driven by material. So if I wanted to, instead of um, having a, a dark brown, multiply, I could do normal, and I could have uh, metal driving this. But I'm going to go back to just my regular dirt texture, because I think that looked better. Okay, so there's the very, very quick dirt. Um, I'm going to add another layer too, and I'll show you how to do some quick edge wear. So edge wear, this will be a lighter layer obviously, edgeware tends to be a bit lighter. Um, it's still completely rough. I'll add another layer mask to that and a substance effect. And now in my substance effect, I'm going to pick one of these edge masks. So let's try metal edgeware. There you go. That's a little bit extreme. I'll probably have to tone that down a little bit, but you can see how it's kind of clinging to the, the edges of the model here. So I can adjust the wear level, I can adjust the contrast, um, and if I decide I really like this but it's a little bit extreme for my tastes, I could change the color or I can just reduce the opacity of the layer so I'm only getting a little bit. 
Um, finally, if you wanted to paint in some custom effects yourself, you're free to do so. Just make a new regular layer on top, um, switch to whichever brush tool you like, whatever kind of material you like, and you can paint directly on the surface. That's all I want to show you for today. Um, have fun with Substance Painter.